I absolutely love all of the high-concept Disney movies that are shaped around a wildly complicated premise that no child would be able to wrap their head around without the fun world or characters. And movies like WALL-E, Soul, and The First Inside Out are genuine masterpieces for diving into those concepts and exploring every nook and cranny of those themes. So when a sequel was announced for Inside Out, I wondered what in the world could even be said. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the talking sentient sandwich, and I shouldn't have been surprised that Inside Out 2 was incredible. You know how the first is so well done that it should be shown in schools to help teach emotional maturity? Well, the same is true for the second. Every small decision and character interaction within the mind is a well thought out allegory that can be interpreted in a multitude of ways, because everyone experiences growing up and changing differently. I don't know how they made the climax for both so impactful for such a wide variety of viewers, but Inside Out 2 nails its subject matter just as delicately and accurately as the first. I can't say I wasn't worried that there would be no reason to make a sequel to Inside Out, but clearly the filmmakers had a lot to say when they started writing this. And though there's plenty discussed, I think this whole movie centered around an idea that culminated in one scene so well, it gave me chills. Of course, the first movie was about not suppressing sadness, but rather just letting yourself feel it and work through it, and it almost seemed like that would be repeated in this sequel, but that's only a part of the themes. I mean, bottled up emotions is something that literally happens, but don't worry, there's plenty more discussed within this story. And in that, I figured this movie would be about puberty, with that being the big tease at the end of the first, but it's not. It's about anxiety. And I knew that would be covered incredibly well the moment someone said the line that to solve the problem, they just needed to tell anxiety to get over it. I mean, come on, who wrote that? And are they okay? That might have been the funniest joke in the movie, if not for the Mean Girl CSI enhance moment. There are also other emotions added, but Envy, for instance, was barely anyone, mainly just there to give a normal-ish person for anxiety to bounce off in conversation. I also haven't really brought it up yet because there's just so many philosophical allegories to examine, but this movie is wildly entertaining, even hilarious at times. But the way this movie explored the idea of one's sense of self through the lens of anxiety could not have been better, and for that reason alone, I have to recommend checking out Inside Out 2. But now, it's time to dive right into the spoilers so I can finally discuss the symbolic narrative that I've been trying desperately to keep vague. But as I hinted at before, the entire film was predicated on one idea, which is to explain what a panic attack is to a child. Shaping every character and story point around that concept, everything backed up that theme masterfully. If you've seen it, the concept was similar to Puss in Boots 2, one of my favorite films in recent memory. And though it's not as perfectly executed as that, it's still just as accurate and emotionally impactful. And after the movie depicts a very real panic attack featuring real grounding techniques, Riley is able to process the soul-shattering anxiety attack overcoming her, and the way that a wave of suppressed memories flooding her mind was a contributing factor to helping her through it was nothing more than a stroke of genius. There was also the scene directly after the panic attack where Riley was able to feel joy for the first time in a while, and I'm not gonna lie, that got me. Just the whole idea that forced happiness can't help you feel happy unless you go through the effort and work to develop your own emotional maturity. Without putting in that work, every interaction you have will feel artificial because it likely is. I should have expected that level of spot-on and symbolic storytelling, but I was not ready for it to feel like a personal attack on my own shortcomings. And yet, I'm sure that's how 99% of the audience felt walking out of the theater. Also, before I conclude, this may have nothing to do with the plot or philosophy of the film, but joy and sadness pick up some radios, and the entire time I kept thinking about how some disgruntled worker was probably listening in on them because I never saw them change the channel on it. But because the movie was so good and entertaining, I barely had time to think about that. But those are my thoughts on Inside Out too. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly video essays and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.